prostate cancer is the second most common cancer diagnosed in men with the exception of skin cancers. But how does it present and how do we screen or diagnose men with prostate cancer and exclude those that don't? For those of you new to the channel, my name is Dr. Charles Chabert. I'm a urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic located on the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. As always, if you get benefit from this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. In this video, I'm going to detail for you how we diagnose or how we screen prostate cancer and the benefits from that process. To take a step back, prostate cancer in essence is a new abnormal growth which develops in the prostate. The concerns with the development of prostate cancer is that if it is left untreated, gradually, progressively, it will grow and evolve locally in the prostate and depending on the characteristics of that cancer can spread elsewhere. Prostate cancers, when they do spread, do it in three different ways, either through the shell of the prostate, through the lymphatic system to lymph nodes, or alternatively through blood vessels, and they progress and extend to bones. One of the key ways that we diagnose prostate cancer or screen for prostate cancer is by using a PSA test. PSA stands for prostatic specific antigen. It's a simple blood test. It can be done by a specialist or more simply can be organized through your GP. What it does is assess the level of this chemical, this protein PSA in your bloodstream. One of the challenges, however, is that PSA can go up for other reasons beyond just having prostate cancer. Sometimes it can be elevated if men have an enlarged prostate or alternatively, if they have inflammation or irritation within their prostate. If you'd like to be part of our growing community, please follow the link in the comment section down below and sign up to our free newsletter that comes out on a weekly basis, keeping you up to date with all aspects related to prostate health and various treatments that are available uh, for men. Now back to the video. Now the risk factors for developing prostate really are a family history. And so across the board, the lifetime risk of developing prostate cancer is around one in seven. If you do have a first degree relative, a brother, a father, then that, is, that has been affected by prostate cancer, then that will increase your risk of developing the disease. If you have one first degree relative, your risk goes to one in three. If you have two, it goes to one in two. And if you have three first degree relatives that have been diagnosed with prostate cancer, the probability is exceedingly high that you will be diagnosed with significant disease at some stage in your life. Beyond family history, age is a significant driver. And crudely speaking, the older we are, the more likely we are to be diagnosed with prostate cancer. Certain racial groups are more likely to be diagnosed with prostate cancer. And in the United States, African-American men do have a higher risk of developing prostate cancer and when diagnosed can be a more aggressive form of disease. Beyond that, if there is a genetic uh, mutation within a family such as BRCA1 or BRCA2, there's a history of breast cancer. These are risk factors for developing prostate cancer at some stage. So what is the data that we have that gives us some uh, scientific backing, if you like, that having a PSA test is beneficial? Well, the best data to date really comes from a large international uh, multi-center randomized control trial that was performed in Europe that started in 1993. That trial is called the European Randomized Study of Screening for Prostate Cancer, the ERSPC. In essence, what that study aimed to do was to screen using a PSA test between every two to four years, screen one group of the population and leave the other group unscreened. Now they've followed those men up for a long period of time and we now have 16 year data looking at the impact of having a PSA test. The ultimate end result of this study was did having a PSA test reduce the probability that a man would die from prostate cancer, i.e. did a PSA test reduce prostate cancer specific mortality? In essence, the answer to that study was yes, it did reduce 
mortality. So you were less likely to die from prostate cancer if you did have a PSA test. Now, the core group in this study uh, were men between the ages of 50 and 69. And that really is our core or key cohort that gets the benefit from a PSA test. When we followed these men up for 16 years, we actually found that there was a 20% reduction in the relative risk of dying from prostate cancer. Now, a secondary endpoint that was also found was the longer you followed people up as well, the longer the data was, we found that there were improvements or reductions in the probability of being diagnosed with metastatic prostate cancer. Now, metastatic prostate cancer is the type of disease that's diagnosed when men have been found to have cancer beyond the prostate itself. A very uh, famous example of that more recent in more recent times is the ex-president, President Biden, who uh, by all accounts earlier this year in 2025 was diagnosed with metastatic prostate cancer in his early 80s. So we did see in the ERS PC trial that by having a PSA test, we could reduce the probability of being diagnosed with metastatic disease by around 50%. Screening has changed significantly over the last decade or two. Beyond just a PSA test, beyond an examination of the prostate, which certainly here in Australia, the majority of people that are performing these tests are urologists, primary care physicians, general practitioners, family doctors tend to do a PSA test on its own. That's a discussion beyond the limits of this particular video. But if you see a specialist, then perhaps depending if you've had the next step or not, but a digital examination may also be utilized. Beyond the blood test and the examination comes an MRI scan. And really an MRI scan has revolutionized how we screen for prostate cancer. It's far more specific, it's very targeted. We get an image of the prostate. And on the basis of that image, certainly if there's no target lesion, that man can be surveyed for a period of time rather than needing to proceed on with a more invasive test such as a biopsy. The flip side of that is if on an MRI scan we do see a particular lesion, then we know the probability that that lesion could be cancerous and also we know the location within the prostate that that lesion resides. So the utility of imaging has allowed us to be more specific with putting men through the process of trying to determine if they have prostate cancer. Still in 2025, with the uh, potential false positives and false negatives that we see with a PSA test, and what I mean by that is that the probability that the PSA, from a false positive point of view, the probability that you can have a high PSA, but no cancer, false negative, you can have a normal PSA, but still have cancer. So these tests are not 100%, but the aim with adding multiple tests together is to really be more accurate with our assessment. I hope this provides you some information with regards to the utility of being screened for prostate cancer. If you've got comments or questions, or if you'd like to share your journey, your story, so that other men may learn from your experience, please share it in the comments section down below. Until the next time, take care of your prostate.